Hi, it's the Lipstick Gal. Thank you so much for watching today. I had somebody ask if I would show them how I apply my lipstick start to finish. So that's what we're doing today. I have been in love with lipstick since I was a little kid, like four and five, and I was getting into my mom's lipstick. It just seemed like, like a magic thing. And I've always, always loved it. And red lipstick is my particular favorite, maybe because it evokes kind of the golden age of Hollywood, those beautiful black and white, as well as color photos of just truly glamorous women with just bright red lips. So that's what I'm doing today. I'm doing a red lip, but I wanted to show you a couple of different ways that I wear a red. There are days that I'm busy and I gotta go and I still wanna wear a fun, punchy color. So that's when I reach for something like this. This is a tinted lip balm from Honest. This is the shade Cara Cara. And this is basically just going to nourish and hydrate my lips and impart a little bit of color. And when I'm wearing a product like this, I usually don't worry about lip liner or anything else because it's kind of a really soft and easy look. I'm gonna put this on. This is the shade Blood Orange. And this is one of those that I usually just throw on without any sort of <laughs> mirror. And I kind of use it like a chapstick. Then I'll go back and take a look and see, okay, is it looking all right? Do I have it places where I don't need it? This is something I learned a long time ago when I first started wearing lipstick. My mom taught me this because she does this too, is that edge right along the edge of your lip, or if you go one way it's skin and one way it's your lip, she says, you know, you can feel that right there. And I learned later, it's called the vermilion border. She goes, if you go straight to where that is and then pull down, it's super easy. And then she just used to smush her lips together a little bit to kind of spread it out into all the places. And it doesn't look that bad. I used to be able to do that with a bright red and get it perfect every time. But now that I'm nearing 50, <laughs> It doesn't work anymore. I'm gonna be 48 in January and I definitely feel like my lips have less volume than they used to. So now the only time I do something like this is with a product like this that really, you know, it doesn't look too messy if I don't get it absolutely perfectly in the middle. Let's move to a more pigmented red. I'm gonna use one from Charlotte Tilbury. This is one she made for her mom. This is called Patsy Red. I'm not gonna use a lip liner because I wanna show you that you can wear a red lipstick that is a little bit bolder, that is a little bit more pigmented without reaching for a lip liner. And I feel like it's really helpful, especially if you're looking at the shape of the bullet. This one here definitely has those kind of angles to it. Now I know every lipstick gets worn down the more and more you wear it, but if there is a way for you to maintain those sharp edges as much as possible, do your best to do it because that's how I line my lips. So I will grab a mirror. Maybe I should grab a small one. And then I always start at my Cupid's bow. That's just me. Start wherever you feel most confident. But instead of filling in this bottom portion here, I use that sharp edge right at the edge of my lip line. And I'll tell you, there's a lot of times that, you know, to increase the, the appearance of volume, you can cheat your lip line. I never cheat my lip line unless I'm using a lip liner. So I'm gonna start with keeping this right at the board, that vermilion border of my lips. And so the pressure, instead of being on, as I'm placing it on my lip, the pressure isn't here the pressure is on the tip just kind of to carve out the line. And you'll notice I don't have any color here. We'll fix that in a minute. And then I do the same thing, but I use more of this edge right here and not so much the tip. I'll angle it and I'll pull it right along and I try and rotate which side I use to try and maintain those edges as much as possible. I know it's kind of finicky, but if I'm gonna go without a lip liner, I gotta do something. And then I use the flat portion to fill in the rest.
Okay, so you saw me slathering on a whole bunch more. I've noticed a couple of things. One thing that I've noticed is that I have a little bit of color here in the corner where I don't want it. And the one thing, especially with a more pigmented lipstick, I use my fingers kind of like corrections, but I only use each finger once. <laughs> And then I clean it off because if I keep going back with that same finger, I'm just going to smudge and I don't want a big pink or red line going someplace else. So I'm going to use my smallest finger, have it above where I want it, and between my nail and the edge of my finger, I'm going to draw down and push in. And I have very little red on the edge of my fingernail and my finger, but I've cleaned up this little spot here. I feel like I have a little bit over here outside of where I want it. So here I'll use the edge of my finger and kind of push in towards the lip and that'll clean up the corner. Sometimes if you pull out this way, you'll spread color where you don't want it. I always press in towards the opening of my mouth as opposed to pulling out. The other thing I do frequently is just a clean cotton swab and I'll just drag it, but I always kind of aim it towards the center and I pick up any excess. Let's see. Because if I end up pulling out, I'll end up with this color trailing places I don't want. I feel like this looks pretty good. I'd be really happy wearing this today. Now, if I ever feel like I need a little bit more volume and pizzazz, I think about what I can do to make my lips look that way. A lot of times people will reach for a gloss. I will if I'm wearing a nude shade or if I'm wearing a much lighter lipstick. But with a red, I feel like the potential for having that color being broken down by the gloss and then start feathering out into those fine lines around my nearly 48 year old lips gets to be really high and I don't want to have a high maintenance red. So what I'll do instead is I will grab a pencil. This one is really nice. It's from Essence. It's their Stay 8 Hour Lip Liner and uh, this is the shade, what is this one? passionate number eight. So I'm going to use this now that I already have my lipstick on. I'm going to cheat my lip line just a hair with this. So I'm going to go back starting at my cupid's bow and I always find that the right side of my upper lip is just a little bit less plump than the other side. So I'm going to cheat it up just a hair and instead of like really over drawing it, I'm going to stay right on the vermilion border but just a hair out. Like if you were to split this um, liner like in half. Half of it would be on the vermilion border and half of it would be right on the outside edge. I'm not really going to go a lot and I'm really only going to do it like to about here. So. Do you see the difference between this side and this side? I feel like it makes a huge difference. And then I don't keep taking it on the outside the vermilion border all the way down. I find that makes me look um, like my lips are really thick all the way down. I don't really like that look. I want it more kind of bee stung in the middle. That's my personal preference. But however you want to do it, just know that you can use liner over the top of lipstick, no problem. So I'm going to finish the other side. And then the other place that I like to cheat, I like to cheat kind of like this section right here, the same area down below. So instead of starting from the outside corner, I usually start like just right here. And I'll ride that vermilion border just a hair. Now you can see right here, it's not blended really well. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of feather that in. Make sure to keep liner on there, but instead of going all the way to the corner, I just kind of cheated there. Now I will use liner to fill in other parts of my lips to make sure that the lipstick and the lip liner look more blended and not like two separate distinct colors. I feel like I need just a hair more right here. And I feel at this point, I brought the volume back to my lips that I want without adding gloss. And using a long wear, but even affordable lip liner, along with a 
more long wearing matte formula will give me that fuller overall look without being really, really large and exaggerated. And this to me looks a little bit more believable than if I were to put gloss on the top and then I could have it potentially trailing other places or to really over cheat the line. I wanna just barely get it there. I'm gonna take this off and we're gonna go one more way. These are the different ways that I use red lipstick to get the look that I'm going for. The last way that I will apply lipstick is to start with liner first, and I'm gonna do another red one. This one is from NYX. This is their Line It Loud in Rebellious Red. This is a slightly warmer leaning red. I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. The one thing I'll tell you is if you have lipstick on and then you put liner down, the liner is not going to stay as well as if you put liner down first. But sometimes I'm throwing on lipstick, I'm like, oh, I gotta fix something. Oh, I need just a little bit more volume at my cupid's bow or down below, and that's when I kind of cheat it with a lip liner. That's kind of like my easy quick fix, but it doesn't last as long as if I start with a long wear lip liner first. So I'll do the same thing. I'll slightly ride the outside edge over the vermilion border on my cupid's bow and on this section down here of my lower lip. I'll keep the rest of it right to the vermilion border and then we'll fill it in with either all the way with liner and then lipstick or just lipstick. It just kind of depends on my whim. If I ever feel like I get like too much liner where I don't want it, I push it straight up into my lip area instead of swiping this way or out. I just kind of like shove it up because it's gonna get covered by lipstick eventually. But I felt like this line got a little long here, longer than I wanted. So this looks a little nuts. <laughs> I think at this point, just to make myself feel better, I'm gonna fill in the rest of my lips with this liner and then I'll throw a lipstick over top. The lipstick I'm using today is new from YSL. This is their bold lipstick, their intense, bold pigment lipstick. And I have the shade 01 and this one I think is just called Le Rouge. I love shade number one from YSL. It's one of my favorite shades of red lipstick. I have it in so many other formulas, but let's put this one on today. At this point, the one thing I'll tell you is I never take, if I have lip liner down first and I filled my lips in, I never take this all the way to that edge. I leave just a little bit of just liner at the edge and I try and you know either use a finger to smudge it out or rub my lips together to kind of disperse the color. My fear is if I go all the way to the edge because this is a slightly creamier formula that it's gonna go outside and then start trailing out. So I really am super careful to make sure I keep just a little bit of just liner so nothing goes out of that area. This is a much creamier formula. I was wearing this earlier today for the first time in just my sunglasses and my SPF. And I felt like it was a, a really comfortable, creamy formula, but I'm really curious to see what it wears like long-term. I'll have to spend a lot of time wearing it on its own without liner. And then today I'm pairing it with a liner for a longer wear, but I think overall it looks pretty good. The one thing you'll notice, I have a little bobble of color in the corner. Sometimes if I want to reuse this, but I'm worried this is going to get on there, I'll pull off just the edge <laughs> of the cotton, kind of roll it between my fingers to get rid of that fuzz or kind of compact it back in and I have another clean layer. So here, I'll do that. I feel like the difference between this corner and this corner is significant, so I'm going to take some time to even them up. And then with the red lipstick, I always stick my finger in and pull it out to make sure any excess lipstick that might end up on my teeth doesn't get there. I've always loved the look of a red lipstick and I'm willing to go that extra mile to figure out exactly how to make my lips look their best while wearing a bold shade. I don't know yet whether she's gonna be high maintenance or not. 
I really prefer a bold, bright red that isn't high maintenance. This one from Charlotte Tilbury and Patsy Red is not high maintenance. I have some others in my collection like the Lisa Eldridge True Velvet Reds, not high maintenance reds, even though they're super pigmented. This one has me a little worried. It's October, the weather starts to, you know, kick up and we have a little bit of a breeze and it gets in there and I have to pull it out. <laughs> this is gonna have little red trails on my face that I will not be able to blend in. I'll just have to get back to you. This is just a handful of ways to apply things like a tinted lip balm, a lipstick on its own, a lipstick together with a lip liner. And then, you know, to really define your lips and really go all out, lip liner first, and then a glossy lipstick over the top. I know there are multiple different ways to do it, but these are the ways that work for me, especially with what can be a really high maintenance color like a red. I think it's safe to say that there's a red for everybody, and I think it comes down to a couple of things. First one is, do you want a sheer red lipstick? Something that's more like tinted lip balm like this or like a light wash? Or do you want something that's fully, fully opaque in one swipe? I think that's a decision you have to make. And then do you want to go cool or do you want to go warm? And then at that point, do you want to go kind of deeper or a little bit lighter? And I think those are kind of the variables, but I think the most important ones, sheer or not, <laughs> and then warm or not. <laughs> And I think that will kind of help you decide where you want to go from there. Thank you so much for watching today. I would love to know what your tricks are for applying lipstick. What never fails you, what keeps your lipstick on all day, or to get a totally perfect line despite the fact that, you know, lipstick has the tendency to go places outside of where we initially put it. Let me know what your tricks are in the comment section down below. Thank you so, so much for watching. Have an incredible day, and I'll see you again soon.